Greetings guys. Uh, so today's video is uh, in response to Matt Partridge. Uh, said, hey, could you do a video around E85 tuning uh, using a Motes Quarter Horse binary editor? Um, yeah, sure. This is actually a very easy topic. So um, while this the actual configuration in the software is just a couple, couple minor things, I want to talk a little bit about E85 in general um, for those that are a little bit newer to it before we, we get into what you do in the tune. Because a lot of E85 success or failure comes from having the right stuff around it as well. So first thing to know about uh, E85 is that it, what it's ultimately meaning is that the gas is actually 85% ethanol. And, you know, if you're running off a of pump gas, uh, pump E85, you know, it's, it's probably not going to be consistently uh, 85%. It'll usually be a lot less than that. Uh, and then it kind of changes every time you, you hit a different pump. So you have to be careful about that. But, uh, but the big takeaway is that ethanol doesn't burn the same way that, that pure gasoline does. So what you're seeing here is uh, an understanding of pure gasoline versus E85. What is the uh, stoic air-to-fuel ratio? And it's, it's vastly different. And so by this number being so much smaller for E85, what that's telling you is that it needs a lot more fuel to get to the same uh, burn mixture, uh, the air-to-fuel mixture. So in general, the, the basic principle here is that if you can do something globally within the tune to increase the fuel by, you know, about this percent, and usually guys will say somewhere around 30 percent is a good starting point, but you'll just have to experiment with it, uh, especially if you're if you're maybe switching from pump gas to E85 and uh, you've, you've got a little bit of normal uh, gasoline still in the tank. So you're, you're probably on that first tune not going to quite hit a true E85, even if you had good E85 gas going in. Um, so, you know, sometimes on that first tune, if you know you've got a little bit of a blend in the tank, you might not shoot for something as aggressive as increasing fuel by 30%. Maybe 20 or 25% would be good for that tune. But once you kind of drain most of that out and then you go fill up again on E85, now you're getting to a more true mixture and you, you might need to uh, increase fuel again. So... To, to be successful with this, though, on, on something like a Fox body, you know, the first thing I'll say is if, if you're really going to benefit from E85, you're probably not a naturally aspirated combo. You'd have to have a lot of compression on an engine, and most guys running really high compression are honestly going to skip E85 entirely and go to something else. And those are those are usually, you know, bracket cars and stuff like that. So I just don't see a whole lot of really high compression street cars uh, trying to do 85 with, you know, small block Ford, stuff like that. Um, but what, what you will see is a lot of boosted guys, a lot of the turbo guys mainly uh, that are really after the E85 for obvious reasons. And so to go from kind of what a stock Fox body looked like to that, obviously you're going to need way bigger fuel injectors and that's with any E85 setup, but whatever you think you needed, or maybe what you know you needed when you were pump gas, you know, you need an injector that's, that's good for a solid 30% more, uh, or, you know, you're immediately going to have a problem. You know, and then and then depending on what you're going to do with the car, you might need more than that. Uh, now, to get that kind of fuel delivery, though, you know, the the stock fuel pump hanger and stock lines on a Fox body are tiny, guys. You, you're not really going to get very far at all with the 85 if you actually need E85. It just can't support the volume. So you need to plan on braided lines all the way front to back and uh, a larger fuel pump, obviously, or, or a multi-pump setup, potentially and you're going to need a different fuel pump hanger setup. So if you want to try to make it as easy as you can, but take that next step up, well, the next thing up really is to, you know, keep an in-tank pump like the factory had it, do a single pump rather than multiple pumps, but you'll have to go with, with a bigger hanger. So something like the, uh, the Quantum or uh, Pro-M, uh, you know, fuel pump hanger is a good fit. Uh, you know, combine that with something like an Aeromotive 340 or a Walbro, uh, you know, 450, 525, just depending on how big you're going. Uh, and then you're going to have to run braided lines all the way up. And when you do that, uh, you know, a, a Dash 6 uh, hose goes pretty far. Uh, you might be surprised, but uh, depending on your power levels, you know, you might be getting into the, the Dash 8 stuff. If you really need something bigger than a Dash 8 send, you need to get out of the in-tank uh, pump game altogether. You need to go to something bigger that's an external pump uh, where it's a lot easier to have those kinds of options. Um, keep in mind also that you're going to have to do a new fuel filter setup that's designed for your braided lines if you go to that. 
Uh, so, you know, there's going to be more costs there. You also need to be particular about the type of, of fuel filter that you use uh, because the actual media inside of these things is not all the same. So usually you'll you'll see a, a micron count, you know, says, oh, filters down to, you know, so many microns. Uh, that's usually one good indication of uh, whether or not it's going to work for 85. But uh, generally these things are advertised as, you know, this is designed for 85. And what you want is you want something like a glass filter media. You want to get down to those those low like 10 micron type deals uh, if you can uh, because the 85 is kind of nasty so you know that's that's another consideration and then of course uh, you're going to need way bigger fuel injectors they need to be injectors that are compatible with the 85 most are but it's something you want to check out uh, and your fuel rails also those stock fox fuel rails are very small so you know by the time you've done all the other braided lines and the bigger pump and everything else you know, you, you kind of need to go with something aftermarket. Now, honestly, just about any aftermarket rail, as long as you can physically make it fit on your intake and distributor setup and everything else, they're all pretty similar. I mean, they're going to flow a ton of fuel. So unless you're getting into some really extreme power levels, you know, 1,000 horsepower plus, you could practically pick anything, Aeromoto, BBK, you know, stuff like Glens, uh, you know, behind bars, race cars. There's, there's a bunch of them out there. Uh, but, but they're all pretty much going to be very, very similar. So you'll be good there. Now, and then, of course, you need a fuel pressure regulator uh, that will that can work with the braided lines. So if you've, you're coming off of the stock rail setup where you had a, you know, a regulator right on the rail, you're not going to have that with any of the bigger uh, aftermarket rails. So you're going to have to have uh, both a place to mount a regulator and braided lines to get from the fuel rails to the regulator and then the return back home. Uh, so, you know, there's there's a lot of cost in, in really properly going to an E85 setup on a Fox body. But, you know, when you're when you're building a car like this, you, you just have to understand that that's what you're getting yourself into. And most of you probably know that. Uh, but but these are some things you got to do. And also make sure on the hose, you know, you can't just put any hose you want on this stuff. You, you need to make sure you're using like PTFE hose. Um, you know, E85, again, it's, it's not gasoline. It's a little bit different. So it's uh, it's known to cause a lot of issues with uh, degrading certain types of components. Um, that it's exposed to. So PTFE lines are the are the safe way to do uh, ethanol. And then lastly, I just want to bring this up too. You know, when you go to these way bigger fuel pumps like a Walbro 450, like what's in my uh, my 88 coupe, you you got to realize too that the stock wiring on a Fox body that drives the, the stock fuel pump, it's not adequate for this. It wasn't designed to handle a massive pump and a lot of uh, you know electrical demand. So you know, there's a couple ways to go about it, but one of the easy things you can do is you can use the the stock fuel pump relay that was, you know, at least in my car, it was underneath the, the driver's seat. Some of them are elsewhere. But the main power that would come out of that relay when the key goes on that would go ultimately to power the pump, you would take that that main lead right there and you would just use that to trigger a larger relay. And then that larger relay's uh, primary wires should be, you know, 12 or 10 gauge wire. Uh, and it's something going, you know, directly to the battery. Uh, with as short a run as you can, and that's going to prevent you from having a lot of voltage drop. Uh, you'll probably need to go up to something like a, a 30 or 40 amp relay, depending on which pump you go with. And, uh, you know, you'll need some kind of an inline circuit breaker or, uh, you know, something like that for protection. But, you know, that little bit of difference, when you when you really look at the uh, pumps like the Walbros, and you look at kind of what, what happens at different voltage points, I mean, voltage has a big impact on a pump's ability to, to produce what it says it's going to produce. So if you're running little dinky you know, wire, even if you don't set something on fire, or have it, have something melt down on you, you're still just, you're going to experience voltage drop. And if you're using really long runs of, uh, you know, uh, positive and negative for the, for the primary wires, you're, you're just setting yourself up to not really get all you can out of the system. So for me, you know, I wanted to try to run a single 450 and take it as far as I could. So things like the 10 and 12 gauge wire upgrade and in, in the new relay system, that's just kind of part of the, part of the game. So Anyways, that's some of the things I want you guys to consider if you're if you're thinking about E85. But back to the tune process. So, if if you want to change your your setup to run with the 85, there's really two things you would have to do at a minimum, and then I'll talk about a third thing that you'll probably you know need to experiment with. So, jumping into a binary editor, and uh, I'm just going to jump right into it here. So we're looking at a GUFB Fox body strategy, and I'm in the uh, fuel injector area where we would put in the injector high slope and low slope. And so these numbers right here are uh, 
you know, basically the size of the injector, more or less. Now, something interesting, a limitation here I want to talk about and why I like the approach I'm about to teach you is notice the biggest number I'm allowed to put in here for the slopes is 112. So this is uh, this is actually a real tune that I'm working on right now, but these are Siemens DECA 80 pound injectors. And so my high slope is about 80, 82 right now, but the low slopes are always going to be considerably higher. And this particular injector is known to have a very different low slope and high slope. And the thing is you're right on the cusp already of being at the highest possible number it's going to let you put in this system. So if you decide you need to make the low slope a little bit higher, you can't. And so you, then you have to really, the only thing you can do is go manipulate your mass air transfer in that, that low fueling area and try to smooth it out. So, you know, so you run into a problem, you try to go to these big injectors. And if you want to go run something like, you know, over a hundred pound plus, you're going to have to do some kind of trickery anyway. So here's the thing you can do. Just remember this as the injector slope numbers go down, you will get more fuel because if the system knows how much fuel it's trying to get out of an injector, if it thinks it has a small injector, it assumes that it has to open that injector a lot more and work it harder to get to that fuel amount. If it thinks it has a really big injector, it knows it doesn't have to work very hard with that injector to get to that fuel flow. So the smaller the injector size you put in here, the more fuel you get. And the cool thing is when you change these injector slopes to do something like E85, you're not going to mess up anything else in the tune as far as, you know, your load calculations and your per load calculations and your, you know, all this other stuff, it, it's not going to mess that up because that stuff is really determined by the mass air meter and the cubic inches and we're leaving all that alone. So a really, really simple thing you can do here is pick what that percentage is going to be. If you think it's going to be a 30% difference for, you know, your E85, then just take these numbers and, you know, you could do it a couple ways, but you could multiply by 0.7 and that would effectively reduce those by 30% and you're going to get that much more fuel. And I mean, that's it. That it's that simple. And the other thing, like I said, that's a nice uh, piece to doing it this way is that you've gained all this headroom right here. So if you need to put in slightly bigger injector data, well, now you've, you've got room again before you're going to hit that 112 maximum number. So just reducing this by 25 or 30% or whatever your number is going to be, that's what you want to do. Now, the second thing I want to talk about that you have to do is cranking fuel because while the car is cranking and until it starts, it doesn't care what injector size you say you have. It doesn't care what mass air meter you have. The only thing it does is look at this right here and it says, what is my, my injector pulse width going to be while the engine's cranking based on what my coolant temperature currently is. So like on a hot start, you know, up at 180 degrees coolant temp, requires a much shorter injector pulse width. This is just directly saying what's the pulse width in milliseconds. And on a cold engine, as we work our way down, you see that the, the pulse width increases. Uh, and then there's also a multiplier here that says, you know, what does it do over time? So if you just leave the car cranking and cranking and cranking, waiting for it to catch, it's saying whatever that normal pulse width would be over the course of time. So in this case, we're going from zero seconds when I first turn the key up to six seconds, with six seconds straight of cranking, it has a multiplier. So it's slightly increasing fuel in this case, right at the beginning. Then it kind of, you know, flattens out and does whatever that other function requested. And then if you really just leave it cranking, it's going to start to, to taper off the fuel a little bit. So what I'm getting at here is again, if you know that you had good injector data for your cranking when you were on pump gas, now you switch to E85 you would need to do some similar things here. You would basically just take all of your, your known good uh, cranking pulse width numbers and you could either multiply here by 1.3 uh, to increase you know, that usage by 30%. Uh, you could also do it uh, in this area right here. You could take whatever these multiplier numbers are that you have and increase those. Uh, either way is going to work just fine. I personally would, would prefer to, uh, to work with this table and use this for just kind of special cases of adding a little extra or taking a little extra away over over a period of time. So usually I would just uh, you know work these and increase these numbers by 30% to get more fuel. So those are really the only two things you have to do. Now, you also have to remember that if you're going to now be data logging and doing all the things you're doing, 
you know, you're, you have to continue thinking about things in terms of a pump gas air to fuel ratio. So that whole thing we were just looking at a second ago where they talk about this is the stoic, you know, 9.8 if you're running E85. Well, in the grand scheme of what we just did, if you have like a wide band on the car that's, that's on a normal pump gas scale, if your tune's dialed in, it's actually going to still show 14.7 uh, as, you know, where you're idling or whatever. It's not going to show 9.8. So you just you have to get that clear in your head. And then, of course, this is where people go in the discussion of, well, don't tune based on an air to fuel ratio, uh, tune based on a lambda. And so lambda would be less confusing because regardless of what gas you're using, if you have the right mixture, your lambda would would be kind of the same. It would be approximately one at stoic and then it would you know go up or down from there. Uh, but you have to just remember that, you know, this this computer uh, that we're dealing with in, you know, a Fox EEC4 computer wasn't really explicitly designed to, to run with uh, E85. So, you know, all the all the different parameters that you're doing, things that are based on air-to-fuel ratios, like your base fuel table, as an example, well, that's, you know, you're not going to manipulate that, that fuel table uh, just because of the E85. Like, you're still going to leave these targets wherever you had them before, and you should still get that, generally speaking, if you, you picked the right multiplier for your uh, your injectors. Now, one last thing uh, that I forgot, and I want to mention it, you know, when you manipulate these injector slopes by whatever percentage, you have to remember to do the same thing here. Uh, you'll need to bring the, the break point down as well, because you're, you're effectively lying to the computer anyways about what size injector you have. So if you had the right uh, injector break point in here before, then you need to, to reduce this uh, the same way that you reduce the injector data um, just to, to make sure everything's good. But other than that, the rest of the stuff should all be uh, just fine to leave it, uh, you know, leave it the way that it was before. So, guys, I hope this helps. Uh, that's, that's how you get the basics of tuning for uh, E85. You know, from there, it's fine tuning. One of the things that a lot of guys uh, complain about with E85 in general, this isn't just a, a Fox thing or whatever, uh, it's just that it, it has generally some pretty grumpy cold starts uh, when the weather is actually cooler as well. And so, you know, part of what you might need to do here, <clears throat> and really you're going to need to expect to do this, is work over this table right here. So the startup open loop table, this is basically saying, hey, when we f once the car does fire and it's officially running, starting at zero seconds and working your way up to however you, far you've set this, this is a modifier of your desired air to fuel ratio. So these numbers, the, the, the point of this is that when the, you first start the car, you'll want more fuel and then you can slowly taper it down, you know, over some period of seconds after the car is running. So when this number is something like 2.63, it's really saying at, at this coolant temperature and this many seconds since the car started, I want my desired air to fuel ratio to be 2.63 less than whatever it would normally be in my base fuel table at that particular uh, point. So it's it's a modifier, and the goal here is that it, it tapers off as the car warms up. So your top row is always going to be all zeros because you don't want it to hold any kind of permanent modifier. This is just to help you with, with warm up. But the things that you might need to do is you might need more or less fuel in a lot of these areas down here where it's the, the lower second count and the lower temperatures. You might also need to extend the range of your, your time axis here because uh, the factories is actually shorter than what's on the screen here. The, the factory GUFB is only 45 seconds. So, you know, you might find yourself needing a, a two or three minute period of, of adjustment here to really get things to stay happy and not, you know, kind of bog down and choke, you know, a lot and have a lot of really weird rich conditions. Uh, just based on the 85. So, so plan on spending the time here. What you're going to have to do, you know, every car is different. I'm not going to give you guidance there, but, uh, but this is a general good start for you. So appreciate the question. And uh, if you guys have any new ones, fire them at me. Good luck. Godspeed.